Welcome again to Valente Brothers TV. This time we're here at Valente Brothers headquarters in North Miami Beach, Florida. And we're going to talk about something very, very important, which is the philosophy of Jiu Jitsu. Throughout the years, we have learned both through history and through our recent um, memory in Brazil, the problem that can occur if Jiu Jitsu is taught disconnected from its philosophy. So Pedro, talk to us a little bit about this very important issue. You know, growing up, I experienced this because when I was a teenager, Jiu-Jitsu actually had a very bad reputation in Brazil. And actually, a lot of the parents of friends of mine, when they found out that I practiced Jiu-Jitsu, sometimes they looked at me in a bad eye, with a bad image. And all because there were people misusing Jiu-Jitsu in the streets. And at that point, I realized that jiu-jitsu is not always a force of good. That depending on the way it is taught, it can be good, it can be amazing, it can have an amazing transformative benefit for the person who's practicing. But if it's not taught the right way, it can also work the other way. And it can be a force of negative behavior. And we, we witness this in Brazil. A lot of the people sometimes, a lot of jiu-jitsu instructors, were in disbelief and many times they couldn't really understand what was happening but I was a teenager and I many times witnessed in, bir in birthday parties, in social events, jiu-jitsu practitioners being disrespectful towards women, drinking in an exaggerated way, using drugs, picking fights, being cowards towards other people, really creating a mess many times and this really, really hurt the reputation of jiu-jitsu for many, many years in Brazil, and it was a very serious problem. At that time, uh, my father wrote an article for a very big Brazilian newspaper, and one of the things that he said in that article is that the secret to jiu-jitsu, the secret to, to the art, is to understand and follow the philosophy. And that's what we believe in, that the philosophy has a very important role for, so that people can learn jiu-jitsu and use it in a positive way. Talk to us a little bit about the history, even in Japan, going as far as Japan, of how maybe there are some very good examples of what can happen if the philosophy is not present in the instruction of Jiu-Jitsu. Yes, Jiu-Jitsu begins, the roots of Jiu-Jitsu are uh, with the warrior class, the warrior class in Japan. Japan had a caste system and you had a different um, different classes in society. You had the merchants, you had the warriors, you have the, the noble class. And the warriors were actually very cultured. They were educated and they considered themselves of the highest uh, moral character and people who had a huge responsibility in carrying a tradition. A tradition that they felt was very important for Japan as a nation. And the knowledge of jiu-jitsu was something that they treated with the utmost respect and something that was not taught to everyone. It was only taught within the clans, from grandfather to father to son, and they understood that this was a deadly weapon that had to be taught with great responsibility. With the changes that occurred in Japan um, between the, the 19th and the 20th centuries and the Meiji period being established, uh, Jiu-Jitsu changed because a lot of uh, people were no longer interested in learning Jiu-Jitsu because they associated Jiu-Jitsu with the old Japanese ways and they wanted to become more westernized. So Jiu-Jitsu in many ways fell in disrepute in Japan and the reputation of Jiu-Jitsu was greatly tarnished. Um, it was associated with thuggery, it was associated with street fighting, and so Jiu-Jitsu actually developed a very bad name and a very bad reputation in, in Japanese society. And even though the philosophy had already been something that was part of Jiu-Jitsu for many, many years, that element was lost to the point that Jigoro Kano, he, who was a Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, Jiu-Jitsu teacher, he took the art and he changed its name because he felt that the name Jiu-Jitsu was, had a very bad image attached to it. And so he decided to give it the name Judo and create something that was connected with a philosophy. He, he called it Judo, which is Do means way, as a way of life and not just a fighting technique. Well, Jiu-Jitsu 
back in the day through Grandmaster Elio, through the Gracie brothers, Carlos and Elio, the original Gracie Academy. It was taught mostly, many people don't know this, but it was taught mostly in private classes. The group class instruction was done more maybe for training sessions and sparring sessions that happened within the advanced students of the school. So what happened? How was that transition? How maybe that transition impacted the current culture of Jiu-Jitsu? Grandmaster Carlos Gracie learned Jiu-Jitsu from a Japanese master, Mitsuyo Maeda. And he obviously, when he was involved with Mitsuyo Maeda, he witnessed the Japanese traditions and the Japanese customs that go with the art. However, many things happened during that time. Number one, um, Japan in the 1940s, the 30s and 40s, was uh, a member of the Nazi coalition. They were associated with, uh, they were connected with Italy and, and Germany. And so the Gracies at the time did not want to associate themselves with the Japanese customs. Also, as you said very well, their classes were taught privately. And so in a private environment, you don't need a lot of those formalities that are so necessary in a group class. So they, since they were only teaching private classes, pretty much they didn't use the bowing and some of the etiquette that were associated with jiu-jitsu and, and with the martial arts. When, once again, group classes started to be used and, and people started practicing jiu-jitsu, especially as the tournaments came about and they wanted to train together and, and, and create group classes, also for ec economical reasons, to be able to make jiu-jitsu more accessible to people. They kind of, many schools, kind of utilized the informal ways that were um, used in the private classes, they used those same ways in the group class. And so that, in many, many times, created a, a more disorganized environment. There was less organization, less respect, less manners, and that can be very dangerous. Because since we're teaching something that, that, that is actually life and death, you're teaching choking techniques, you're teaching joint breaking techniques. So when you teach something without the right discipline, without the, the right level of, of respect. And it's not just about bowing. It's about posture. It's about making sure that um, bad language is not used. Uh, the military, for example. In the military, they don't use oriental customs, but still, still is an atmosphere of respect, an atmosphere that leads to good behavior and doesn't accept a type of behavior that can be conducive towards activities that are incompatible with such uh, techniques of great danger and, and, and great value um, for self-defense. Well, talk to us a little bit about how we took part in trying to change that and adapt that when we came to the United States. Because what we see through history, not just in Japan, but through what happened in Brazil, we lived through the time which you brought up moments ago where jiu-jitsu, and it's still today, even though there has been great work done by even parts of the media in Brazil to change that, jiu-jitsu in Brazil, maybe for the surprise of most of our viewers, jiu-jitsu comes from Brazil, it's Brazilian jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu from Brazil, from Rio de Janeiro, with the beautiful history. The truth is that for a lot of people in Brazil, jiu-jitsu is seen as a negative activity. I actually had a mother come in last week and she said, oh, you guys teach jiu-jitsu here from Brazil? And she said, you know, I don't really want my, my kids to train jiu-jitsu because, you know, jiu-jitsu is too aggressive and too violent and I don't want to bring that about, you know, with my kids and I don't want to create any type of aggressiveness or violence with my kids. And I had to explain to her our method, our system, and as she, she watched our class, then she liked what she saw and she, she signed them up, but she came in with that um, negative image from, that she brought with her from Brazil. Exactly, and, and, and I think that over the, the years since we established our school, we have been very successful in creating a very positive atmosphere. I think everyone who has had the opportunity to visit one of our schools, they can see that it is an atmosphere of respect, 
of knowledge, of friendship, but with organization and with a very good um, environment for learning without any negativity. But we also feel that we're teaching jiu-jitsu. And I think it's time for us to try to influence the community with some positive ideas towards adding back the philosophy, the right philosophy, because I think there's also a little bit of confusion in regards to what is the philosophy in jiu-jitsu. So talk to us a little bit about how we've been doing that. And Yeah, you know, what, what you just said made, makes me think about when I first started teaching jiu-jitsu back in 1993 when I came from Brazil to study at the University of Miami. Um, and Royce had his amazing victories in the first UFC. And so there was a huge demand for jiu-jitsu in America. And I had been prepared by Grandmaster Elio to teach. And, and I was excited about uh, bringing jiu-jitsu and presenting jiu-jitsu to the people of Miami, in Miami. And one thing that I was worried about, very worried, is about the fact that I might teach jiu-jitsu to someone who might use it in a criminal way, in a violent way. And that was a huge responsibility for me, being a young person and, and, and very concerned about my actions and the result of my actions. I wanted to make sure, I was worried about, what if I teach somebody a choke and they use that, that choke to, to rape, they use that choke to kill, they use that choke in a cowardly way. What if I teach an arm lock and they use that arm lock to break somebody's arm in a way that's not right? And I was very concerned. But one thing that I realized throughout the years is that if you teach jiu-jitsu in an atmosphere of respect, with good manners, and setting an example of rectitude, of honesty, of benevolence, of generosity towards the students. You create an atmosphere in the school where people have to stand a certain way when you're teaching the technique. They have to sit on the mat in a certain way. They are not allowed to use any type of bad words. You only talk about positive things. You talk about health. You set, as an instructor, you set an example to the students of healthiness. When you create this type of environment, then thugs and criminals who come in, they don't stay. They don't feel comfortable. Either they change and they allow themselves to benefit from all the transformative effects of jiu-jitsu, or they leave. And many times they leave because they just cannot feel comfortable in such a clean and um, positive atmosphere. Because you don't learn jiu-jitsu in two or three days. It takes time, it takes hard work, it takes ethics. And so, People are not able to last. They, they might come in with bad intentions. Let me go there and learn some moves so I can use it in a criminal way. But once they realize that it's, it's going to take time and they're going to have to dedicate themselves and they're going to have to be part of this clean atmosphere, they usually give up or, to our happiness, they start changing. You know, we have a student who actually has been with us for many years and he's a great guy, but he had a very rough upbringing. And you know, he might have even been involved with gangs and in the street, you know, learning from the street and, and that type of thing. And when he came in, he had that, you know, tough attitude. And so, throughout the, his classes and, and his experience with us, he started changing in many ways. And one day he turned to us and he said, look, I love coming to your school because it feels like I'm in church. It feels like this is the best time of my week. And why did he say church, even though we by no means are, are a religion or have any type of religious uh, pretensions? We are a, a, a jiu-jitsu school. Um, why did he say that? Because he feels that it's a place where we promote good. We promote a good sign. We promote good actions. We promote a positive attitude, we promote good deeds, we promote a life through moral virtue, we promote healthiness, we promote emotional control, on top of teaching the most effective and most powerful system of self-defense in the world.